Right. One last thing we need to look at is actually finding an angle. How do I find an angle? So I've given two sides. Okay? So this time I'm told that the opposite is 13. The uh, let's, uh, let's not do that. So I'm told the hypotenuse is 114 and the adjacent is 96. Okay? And I need to work out what this angle is. I need to work out what the angle is. So I need to work out theta. How on earth do I do that? Well, so, what do I need to use? Let's have a look. I've got the hypotenuse, I've got the adjacent, I need to use cosine. So, cosine of theta equals the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So, cosine theta equals 96 divided by 114. So, cosine theta equals 96 divided by 114 gives us 0.84. Right, now, our algebra, we kind of say we want to divide both sides by cosine. But cosine is a function. Cosine is not times it. It's not cosine times theta. It's cosine is a function. And we'll see later on what exactly that function looks like on a graph. But what we actually need to do is what's called the inverse. So we need to do the opposite of cosine. And we call that the inverse of cosine. So theta actually equals 0.84 cosine to the minus 1. Now, you look on your calculator. Cosine to the minus 1 is normally a second function above cosine. So you just press shift cosine times 0.84 equals 32.85. So we find, just using our fancy calculators, 32.85 or 32.9. And that is an angle, so it's in degrees. Okay, it's a lot to take in here. I'm, I'm rattling through a lot with this um, trigonometry. But I want you to be able to go off and do all the questions that are in the example before we go. So I'll just do one more of these very quickly as an example. So this time we're going to look for an angle again. Okay, but this time we're looking for this angle, which we'll call x. And that's not what our normal theta is, is it? Now, normally we don't look at that as our theta. So what do we do? Well, we've got two options. One is, we work this angle out, as we used to, and draw them on, and then use the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 to calculate that. Or we reposition our, our cells. So we actually say, look, the opposite is now here. Okay, and the adjacent is now here. And the hypotenuse is still here. Remember the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle, it's always the longest side. So we've actually got slightly different things. I mean, it's not that drastically different. I could just draw this up like this. Okay? And now I've just got that. Is my theta. That's my height. That's my opposite. And that's my adjacent. So they're in the same order we're sort of used to the, with the adjacent on the bottom. But essentially, we can just do it like this. Okay, so we're told that we know, in this case, we know the opposite is 52 metres, and we know the hypotenuse is 110 metres. So we need to find x. So what do we need to use? We've got the hypotenuse and the opposite sine. So sine theta equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay, so sine theta equals 
52 over 110. So theta equals 52 over 110 sine to the minus 1. And that's just us going in for just doing the inverse sign before I actually make that. Um, division. So 52 and then we do shift sign we find out that it must equal 28.2 degrees. Okay, so that's basic trigonometry. What you obviously need to do now is go and practice, practice, practice lots of these questions. Now, I always used to find when I was at school, for some bizarre reason, that I liked tan more than I liked the other functions. They're all exactly the same. They all work exactly the same. So, get practicing, and we'll then move on to more advanced trigonometry.